Kane has taken on many names, Wolverine, Logan, James, Weapon X, and yet no matter where life takes him, he doesn't know peace. Wolverine's life has literally never been easy, not even from day one. He was a child born out of wedlock, and his mom didn't really care for him. In fact, she wasn't around much as she was institutionalized after Wolverine's half-brother died. His biological father, Thomas Logan, wasn't a good person, nor was his other half-brother, Dog Logan. His maternal grandfather was extremely abusive. The only good thing in his life at this point was his friend Rose and John Howlett, his stepfather. But Wolverine is a superhero, which means nothing good ever lasts long. Thomas and Dog killed Wolverine's puppy, leading them to get expelled from the estate. But Thomas did not have it in him to go with Grace. He got drunk and broke into the Howlett mansion with a shotgun. John Howlett tried to protect his wife, but was taken out by Thomas. Young Wolverine witnessed this firsthand, and was this was what triggered his mutant abilities for the first time. His claws scarred Dog's face and were the last thing Thomas saw. Wolverine's mother, now terrified, cast him out. The entire ordeal caused so much stress to her already frail mental state, she too ended her life with Thomas. Thomas's shotgun. Rose fled with Wolverine to BC, where the two did get to experience peace for a bit. Wolverine, though, has the privilege of a healing factor, which saves him at least once or twice every storyline. This healing factor is useful, but it can also give him partial amnesia. Traumatic events alter your brain chemistry, so his healing factor patches that up, meaning that he will forget the hard stuff. Rose later died in Logan's arms after a fight went sideways, so he's off to a great start. Wolverine has had quite a long long list of ill-fated romances, but he made it as far as an actual wedding with love interest Mariko Yashida. The two fell in love when she visited him in New York, but it wasn't meant to be as she was already betrothed. Wolverine ended up dueling her father, leader of criminal organization Clan Yashida for her hand. He lost, but it's the thought that counts. They did duel a second time and Wolverine won that one, and then Wolverine and her were engaged shortly after. Invites were sent out to Wolverine's teammates. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, after the X-Men super guests arrived, they were all poisoned by some tea from crime lord Viper. She was also working with the Silver Samurai, who is also Marioko's half-brother. The X-Men are taken to the hospital in critical condition, except for Wolverine because of his healing factor. The Silver Samurai and Viper send Wolverine on a wild goose chase to get him away from the hospital so they can take out the vulnerable X-Men. Wolverine does make it back in time to save the X-Men. He nearly ends the Silver Samurai, but Viper teleports them out of there. The X-Men all recover and everyone is wedding ready. But Marioko calls it off. The reason? Apparently, she no longer thought Wolverine was worthy. We later learn she was just being mind controlled doesn't cancel out the heartbreak Wolverine experienced, and we even get to see Wolverine cry in the final panel. Wolverine has been a part of some pretty major historical events, both world wars, the Prohibition era, and even the Valentine's Day Massacre. This event is a real thing that happened in 1920 Chicago. In our world, there were no survivors from this horrible day, but in the MCU, Wolverine was the only man to make it out alive. Wolverine, now going by Logan, got into some hot water with Al Capone as Capone controlled Chicago's gang scene, and thus anything illegal coming through, like for example, the alcohol Logan was smuggling into the US with his girlfriend. Leading up to Valentine's Day, there were a few fights between Logan and Capone's men, leading to many casualties, including Logan's girlfriend. Her death was what drove Logan to find the famous mob boss. Capone denied having a hand in Logan's girlfriend's death and sent him to the person that did. But surprise, it was just a setup to get Logan to the site of the Valentine's Day massacre. He almost doesn't make it out, but his healing factor has his back. Wolverine has been captured way too many times to count. This time, he was being tracked by recurring enemy Victor Creed. Victor found Wolverine unconscious in the middle of a murder scene and snatched him away before the authorities arrived. He took him to the Ravencroft Institute so that scientist Nathaniel Essex could experiment on him. The experiments included a lobotomy, which led to a coma and a loss of his left arm. To recap, at this point, Wolverine has gone from accused of crimes he didn't commit, to kidnapped, to lobotomized, to having his arm cut off. Not a good week so far. One of the doctors, Claudia Russell, freed Wolverine, who was now out of his coma due to his healing factor. The pair was confronted by Victor Creed, and Claudia knew that Wolverine couldn't take a fight with Creed in his state, so she sent him away, facing Victor herself. This was a more evenly matched fight than you'd think. Turns out Claudia was a werewolf, and she was the one committing the crimes. She didn't win the fight, but it was enough for Wolverine to get away. It's unclear how his arm came back, but if I had to guess, it was probably the heel. 
healing factor. It's pretty rare that Wolverine ever fully dies, but one way that has been confirmed to finish the job is drowning. The healing factor requires oxygen, so take that away and Wolverine is done for. It's a fact that has been confirmed in Uncanny X-Force 33 and Wolverine Black, White and Blood issue 4. The serious drowning situation in Uncanny X-Force involved Wolverine, a student of his Evan, and Wolverine's son, Dokken. Dokken has hated Wolverine since he was abandoned by him. Wolverine didn't even know he was born. But Dokken is still set on causing Wolverine's demise and doing so while Wolverine watches one of his students get attacked. It's not cute. Eventually though, Wolverine does get saved and he and his son fight it out. His son loses the match after Wolverine holds him face down in a shallow puddle. In Black, White and Blood, Wolverine finds himself in shark infested waters. He is clearly very set on not drowning, admitting that if he were to pass out from blood loss and sink to the bottom of the ocean, his healing factor would bring him back just for him to drown again in a continuous horrifying loop. Until a miracle occurs of course and someone drags him above ground. This is one of the only confirmed ways to permanently end Wolverine. Another major historical event Logan had the displeasure of experiencing was the bombing of Hiroshima. I am not kidding. During the Second World War, Logan is captured by soldiers in Japan. He gets his usual treatment of being put in a local prison. He eventually escapes beside Lieutenant Ethan Warren, who will soon become a problem. Logan finds a place to relax for a while with a local girl and they fall in love. But again, good things can't last for him and Lieutenant Warren reappears. The mutant fights Logan's lover, who is a talented swordswoman, but eventually over powers and ends her. This brings Logan into the fight, but as the two are pummeling each other, a plane is soon, soon overheard overhead. The plane that is carrying the atomic bomb. It destroys the city and injures the two men. Logan's healing factor is working over time as it now has to regenerate Logan's entire outer skin layer and half his insides. He looks bad, y'all. At this point, two things are consistent for Wolverine. He will be pummeled to near death and his healing factor will ensure that he suffers another day. This was taken to the extreme in Uncanny X-Men Annual Number 11. In this comic, Wolverine actually does die. It's a pretty serious fight with the powerful being Horde. Horde wants the crystal of ultimate vision and tasks the X-Men with getting it for him. He wants it because the crystal has life sustaining powers and grants complete understanding of the universe to whoever uses it. Towards the end of the comic, Wolverine and Horde are battling it out. Wolverine perishes due to a spear to the back and Horde resolves to take part of Wolverine as his prize. This is ultimately his undoing. Through this action, a drop of Wolverine's blood gets on the crystal and the power of it literally regenerates Wolverine's being. Normally, his healing factor would not be capable of bringing him back from just a drop of blood. It was the crystal that gave it a power boost, kind of like a Wolverine jump cable. He has the crystal's power flowing through him at this point and uses that to defeat Horde. At this point, Wolverine is basically a god, meaning he can feel every part of the universe and even manipulate it to his will. But the man does have a conscience and realizes that no one should have this level of power. The crystal is now deemed as a threat to the universe and is destroyed by Wolverine, and he lives to suffer another day. Wolverine famously has a thing for Jean Grey. This has led to a lot of emotional and physical pain over the years. New X-Men issue 148 really wanted to destroy this man. Wolverine and Jean Grey are lured to Asteroid M, old headquarters mutant enemy number one, Magneto. We find that Magneto has spent the last little while creating a plan to destroy the X-Men by preying on their weaknesses. For Wolverine and Jean, they are trapped on this asteroid that is slowly heading towards the sun. The heat and dwindling oxygen make it increasingly difficult for Grey to function, causing her to slowly die. Just before the two enter the sun, Wolverine mercy kills Grey so she won't have to experience being burned up. Wolverine does get to experience this though as he walks the two of them straight into it. What he doesn't know is that killing her and walking into the sun triggered the phoenix, which Jean is then able to use to save the pair and transport them down to earth just in time to save the day. Unfortunately, Wolverine lost her for real in the end as Magneto shocked her with an extreme amount of power. Wolverine, now feral, ended Magneto right then and there, so Wolverine has to deal with the pain of losing her again, twice, once at his own hand, and is now one of the only few who knows what it's like to be burned up by the sun. In the same issue, we learn that Wolverine was once trapped under a glacier for six months. That's already awful. 
it gets worse because glaciers don't have much to eat in or around or under them. Meaning that Wolverine got creative with his healing factor, using it to regrow his skin whenever his hunger took a piece off. He is likely also stuck in a constant state of all over regeneration for this period. His healing factor is forced to not only regenerate his arm, but also any skin that is being damaged by frostbite, making him immune to the effects of it. It is currently unclear how Wolverine got under the iceberg or how he got out. The Old Man Logan storyline has a reputation for being one of the most heartbreaking Wolverine series. For good reason. One particularly famous moment happened in Wolverine Volume 3, number 70. At this point, America is divided into sections belonging to various villains and villain races. An elderly Logan and Hawkeye, they must travel across this chaotic, now wasteland to deliver an important parcel. They have to pass the time somehow, and Wolverine chooses to do so by telling Hawkeye about the day he decided to retract his claws for good. In the evening, the X-Mansion suddenly receives dozens of distress calls before being attacked by a group of powerful supervillains. Wolverine desperately tries evacuating all the students while simultaneously fighting. He slowly works his way through every villain until it's just him and Bullseye. But Bullseye's last words are what flips this all on its head. He asks Logan, why are you doing this? You're supposed to be our friend. Turns out, Logan wasn't attacking supervillains, but instead his own teammates and friends. Actual supervillain Mysterio appeared after the carnage was over, revealing the true scene to Logan. Logan was extremely distressed and heartbroken by what he did, and spent the next few weeks wandering the forest until finally stopping on some train tracks to end Wolverine once and for all. Wolverine is certainly tough as bone, and I do hope more than anything that this man is able to move to a cabin in the Canadian Rockies for some much needed time off. Leave your mark on the comment section down below and let me know your favorite Wolverine moment, good, bad, or tragic. This is Juliana, signing off, see you later.